The Tusimi's Auto Sam Dry A15B Supercritical Dryer is used for anti stiction processing. Stiction is a common predicament in the fabrication of men's devices from surface micro machining. It occurs when surface adhesion forces are higher than the mechanical restoring force of the microstructure. When a device is removed from an aqueous solution after wet etching of an underlying sacrificial layer, the liquid meniscus formed on hydrophilic surfaces pulls the microstructure towards the substrate. The supercritical dryer simply removes all residual moisture from processing and prevents stiction from taking place. Let's now get familiar with the various parts of the supercritical dryer. There are two main pieces to the entire unit. The AutoSAM Dry 815B is where the processing takes place. The process chamber and all the process controls are located on this piece of the unit. The solder condenser captures the exhaust and alcohol during processing. The unit also comes with several different sizes of wafer holders, chamber inserts, and wafer spacers. The supercritical dryer can process wafers ranging in size from less than an inch up to four inches in diameter. You should also find spanning wrenches located by the unit, which are used for tightening the chamber lid. Let's now introduce our lab users. To begin using the supercritical dryer, you must first swipe your buzz card at the access controller. Then select the supercritical dryer from the list of available machines. The green LED light on the vent button should then illuminate. This indicates that the power is on and that the unit is on standby for the vent mode. Before you begin your processing, you should let the dryer stand for three to five minutes. This initial waiting period will allow the internally heated plumbing components to warm up. During the warm-up period, you should begin preparing your sample for the process. At this point, you should unscrew the six knurled nuts and remove the chamber lid from the process chamber. If you plan on drawing wafers 3 inches or less in diameter, make sure that you use the proper size chamber insert. This will keep your sample more stationary during processing. While the unit is still warming up, you should carefully and quickly transfer your wafers from your wafer container into the proper size wafer holder. First, place a spacer ring on the bottom of the wafer holder before putting in your wafer. For the best results, you should minimize the amount of time the wafers are exposed to the air. Once the process chamber has been properly sized for your wafer type and your sample has been loaded into the correct sample holder, you should then place it in the process chamber. Once it is in place, you may introduce ultra pure alcohol. The list of approved alcohols consists of IPA, methanol, or ethanol. In order to prevent any confusion, we only use IPA here at the MIRC. At this point, you should fill the dryer chamber with enough IPA to cover your wafers or your dye. expose the chamber to any chemicals other than IPA. Acids or solvents other than the approved alcohols can damage the chamber. You should now carefully place the chamber lid on top of the chamber. Then, tighten the six knurled nuts around the circumference of the chamber lid using your hands. Once they're as tight as they can get, use the spanning wrench provided to tighten them the rest of the way. Each nut should be uniformly tightened in a star pattern. Follow the numbered sequence shown here. You should repeat the sequence until the nuts cannot be tightened any further. tighten the knurled nuts. This could damage their threads and also keep the chamber lid from sealing properly. 
Once the chamber lid is properly secured, you should set the purge timer. The purge timer is located to the right of the push button switches. Each position on the purge timer is calibrated at five minute intervals. For instance, if you were to set the indicator arrow to the first marked position, you would have a five minute purge time. The maximum amount of time the timer can run is 50 minutes, which would be the 10 position. The purge time is best determined by the individual user. The general rule of thumb is that you use the following. For a quarter chamber full of alcohol, use a 15 minute purge time. For a half chamber full, 20 minutes purge time. For a three quarters full chamber, use a 25 minute purge time. You should also note that the actual purge time can vary greatly depending on your sample in combination with the fill and purge metering value adjust positions. Once the dryer has finished warming up, you should then press the cool button. As the chamber temperature slowly begins to drop, you'll be able to hear the liquid carbon dioxide circulating through the unit. The 815B will continue cooling itself until the chamber temperature reaches 0 degrees Celsius. At this point, the cooling will automatically stop. When the cooling stops, press the fill button and the 815B will begin to fill the chamber with liquid carbon dioxide for 8 minutes. From this point forward, the AutoSAM drive 815B will automatically cycle through all the driving sequence steps until the process terminates. When the 8 minute fill mode expires, the 815B will automatically advance into the purge mode. This will be indicated by the illumination of the purge LED. During this point of the cycle, the 815B will remain in the purge mode for the duration of the time preset by the operator via the purge timer. The alcohol coming out of the 815B chamber exhaust connect hose will be collected directly into the solder condenser. Upon completion of the purge mode, the unit will automatically advance into a post-purge fill mode in which the chamber fills with liquid carbon dioxide for an additional four minutes. This mode is indicated by both the fill and purge LED illumination. Upon completion of the post-purge fill mode, the purge and fill LEDs will turn off and the heat LED will illuminate. The heat mode is the stage of the process in which the samples are carried through the critical point. Both the pressure and temperature will steadily rise. When the chamber pressure goes beyond 1,072 psi, it will stabilize in the neighborhood of 1,350 psi. As the temperature achieves 31 degrees Celsius, the unit will reach the critical point. This is where the Tusimi's equilibrium four minute cycle starts. The heat LED will begin to blink for the next four minutes, indicating that the A15B is in the Tusimi's equilibrium. At the end of the four minute Tusimi's equilibrium period, the A15B will automatically advance into the bleed mode. The heat LED should then stop blinking while the bleed LED starts. Somewhere between 360 and 400 PSI, the A15B will automatically advance from the bleed mode into the vent mode. The bleed LED will turn off while the vent LED illuminates. The chamber should then come to atmospheric pressure in approximately 10 minutes. attempt to remove the chamber lid while the unit is still pressurized. It won't come off and the unit could be damaged. Once the unit has reached atmospheric pressure, the chamber lid may be removed by evenly loosening all the knurled nuts using the spanning wrench in a reverse star pattern. Wafers or chips should then be removed from the chamber for further processing. Once you've removed your sample, seal the chamber with a lid to help keep it clean and moisture free.
When you're finished using the supercritical dryer, you should swipe out the access controller. This will turn the machine off automatically. You should now have a pretty good understanding of how to properly dry wafers using the Tusimi supercritical dryer. If you have any questions, please direct them to an MRC staff member. Please do not ask Michael.